Northern Michigan University has a rich history in sports, but there was a time where women weren't able to contribute to that winning culture. Even before Title IX was passed into law, it was for the efforts of people like Barb Patrick, who were the sole advocates of bringing women into the world of collegiate sports. At her request, NMU added field hockey to their collection of sports in 1968, therefore establishing the school's first women's varsity team in a time where the thought of that was easily dismissed. Title IX would be signed into law four years later, but the effects were not seen immediately. Reflecting back now after 50 years, it's evident that we don't have a perfect system, but the only thing coaches and athletes at this university and others around the country have to worry about is competing. Title IX to me means opportunity, and for me, my career. The fact that swimming was just always there for me, and I've been able to make a career out of the sport that I love is complete opportunity and I can't imagine not being able to play soccer and I know a lot of the people and generations that came before me didn't get to like my relatives and were acting like women didn't play sports uh, 50 years ago it's just craziness for so long I think women have been trying to get us opportunity to play the sport I love with the people I love at a place I love and you know get an education on top of that to me title nine means the equal opportunity to come here and reach my fullest potential as a collegiate athlete you know, you learn so much from sports, uh, being on a team, leadership, self-confidence, how to work together and how to deal with adversity. And I think everything I've done in my life is, it came from the, the sports, the teams I was on. It's just such a huge, a huge thing to help you in everything you do in the, for the rest of your life. NMU is now home to 234 female athletes across 13 athletic teams. And while field hockey is no longer on that list, their old practice field covered by a sheet of asphalt outside the Barry Event Center, the work that Barb Patrick and so many others put forth for the sake of the student athletes at this university is put on display year round.
we go. <coughs> hey, what's going on everyone? From Northern Michigan University, I'm Patrick Myers, a senior studying mobile and web app development. You're watching The Third Degree, the show with spicy questions and even hotter cheese curds. Today, we are joined by Dr. Brock Tessman, the 17th president of Northern Michigan University. He's an expert in international affairs with a PhD in political science with over 20 published works related to the field. He's also a tenured professor at both the University of Georgia and the University of Montana. Prior to coming to NMU, he was the deputy commissioner of higher education in Montana. Brock is an avid trail runner and was part of the nationally competing collegiate cross country team. Dr. Brock Tessman, welcome to the show. Patrick, this is awesome. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad to be here. Long time coming. We're glad to have you. Mm. It's like chips and salsa. Yeah, I'd say so. Mexican restaurant. It's um, it's a classic, and it's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Our first question for you. So, um, you just finished up your first semester here at NMU. In that semester, as the 17th president of the university, you saw almost 900 students graduate. Yeah. 
Um, we also signed on to the Okanagan Charter. We've done a bunch of really interesting things. How do you think the semester went in? You know, from my perspective, it was it was fantastic. I think it's important sort of what the campus feels about how this first semester went. But I'll tell you, um, you know, for me, uh, the most important thing, job aside, was getting the family here to Marquette. And uh, it's just like a dream come true. So, I mean, I can, I'll get in the weeds later with you, Patrick, but I say the first semester went awesome from my perspective. Well, that's great to hear. And I think from a student perspective, we've seen some really great things from you as well. So Good. thank you for that. Take a little cheese curd, yeah. take a dip, and then... You're gonna give me the heads up when we start ratcheting it up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This one's a, this one's a good level for us. All right. <laughs> Let's do it, yeah. Uh, we have a bachelor's in international affairs, a master's yeah. international affairs, um, international relations, excuse me, is that bachelor's? And um, <laughs> you have a PhD in political science. Yeah. Um, so you did a dissertation called Structural Change, Foreign oh Policy, and War. Yeah. Um, I did. As well as you've been involved in a bunch of other research yeah. projects in academia. Sure. Um, apparently you've also been in the room for diplomacy <laughs> talks between North and South Korea. No, oh, yeah, that's a throwback, yeah, but absolutely. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and also what got you interested in political science? So my grandpa, uh, Grandpa John, uh, growing up, I don't know how old I was, but prob pretty young, maybe like five or six. We started the map of the U.S. and he started to walk me through the different states and kind of like let me know which state was was where. And then he started testing me on that. And so the testing got progressively more difficult. And then all of a sudden the the outlines went away. So he'd give me like the continent outlines and we started drawing in the borders of wow. the country. And then eventually I was drawing in the map from scratch myself. And so through that, you start to get curious about these crazy places that you're trying to memorize and kind of draw. And that's the first thing that kind of got me interested in the international side of things. And there's stuff later, but that's kind of like the whole start of my interest in international politics. Yeah, so again, prime from a young age to just be <laughs> going- I've been this. training since day one for this. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing maps by hand, cartography yeah. as a kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My favorite book, and it sounds a bit weird, it's called Maps of the Imagination. If you're out there, you look at for advice as a writer, this book is so helpful. It talks about your writing process as map making. Like think about it the same way as you would think about trying to create a map and highlighting what's important, disregarding what's not. So maps are, are everywhere. This is like the thing you can ask for at a restaurant if you want something a little bit kickier, you know, and they right. have a little bit of character, yeah. So what's happening currently at Northern or coming up here at NMU that, um, you know, you think will have a really big impact on students? Infrastructure-wise, facilities-wise, it's already this amazing place, but we're doing something really cool in Hardin Hall, so library building, uh, among some other things, like totally renovating and redesigning the library space, which is such an important space. And it's a place where, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a biology major or a business major, like chemistry, computer science, there are gonna be programs, offices there for people to connect across disciplines. And I think that's a really great thing about college, too. It, it, for students and also for faculty, this is a range of interests that exist on campus. But the best part for students, that lower level of Hardin, um, so if you're walking up from the parking lots and, and kind of into that, that base level where fear is, is um, we're gonna turn that into a, a totally student-oriented space from top to bottom and, and renovate it so there'll be a lot more uh, student meeting space, lounge space. I mean, you know, we get a lot of students who drive in or bike in from off campus, kind of give those students a landing spot. You know, you got a class at 11 and three, what do you do in between? You know, it'd be nice to be able to like plug in, get some work done, meet with some you know of your friends, and uh, that's going to be a really neat change. We've we've got great spots on campus, some in Jamrich, you know, the Northern Center, and, and sprinkled around. But having really a student union space down there is going to be really good. Um, in terms of the programmatic stuff, you mentioned the Okanagan Charter. It's kind of I think we should roll with the Okanagan Charter because. It's kind of a, a different sounding name. A lot of people think, well, you mean Ontonagan? No, it's the Okanagan Charter. It's in Western Canada, but it captures a lot of what we're doing for just the, the quality of the, the living, the learning, and the working environment on campus. And this charter, it says, look, you gotta think about well-being uh, across the board. There's definitely you know, mental health and physical health, like kind of the traditional way people think about well-being. Anyway, this well-being center, um, you know, integrating those two things, which is a pretty cool thing in itself. So that's gonna be a huge area of focus. But right next to it, you know, we're searching for a, a new lead uh, diversity and inclusion officer, kind of thinking about um, really providing the support and 
more than support, kind of proactive impetus to get students, um, you know, building that sense of belonging and purpose, like the best versions of themselves, however they see themselves. And so that centerpiece of the, the three-piece puzzle is, is diversity, belonging on campus. And then the third one is environmental well-being. So kind of the well-being of the natural setting. And I mean, this place is amazing. It's beautiful. And I know our students and employees care so much about the setting. Okanagan Charter says, look, we're going all in on all three of those areas. Uh, and we're gonna do it on campus, in the community, and then we're gonna support, you know, the kind of faculty research or student research that has a national or global impact. Reaper Acha? That's Reaper what Acha. Okay. You, uh, you, you did promise you're gonna kind of tell me when we jump. I think this is the jump. This is one jump? I yeah, think yeah. this is it. Okay. All right. All right. So you consider yourself an avid runner, um, whether it's climbing Flagstaff Mountain the first time, you know, racing the, uh, the Run the Rock in Oregon. Um, what would you say has been your most memorable or unique running experience? I had a really lousy first three years of college running and um, again, put the time in and, and was getting a lot better. And so kind of on our home track um, in front of my friends and family, uh, like won our, our college conference title in, in the mile and kind of like a fast, you know, final kick. And so I'll, I'll never forget that. So the process of, of attempting something like that brought a lot of value to me. And uh, I was kind of used to like the notion that if you work hard at something, it's going to happen. And that's actually not true. Sometimes it doesn't. A little surprise for you. So we have some pictures. We were, um, I was gonna show these to you. We were wondering if we could just get, you know, sort of your instant reaction to these. Maybe tell us a little bit about them, what's going on. So um, here's our first photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife in the backpack there, no. Um, whole, well, you may not know this, and some of our students might. Travel with little kids, you become a, you know, um, a, a lugger of all things. So we had a couple car seats there. Um, I think we got a stroller in there. And right there, I'm just thinking like, oh, we only got about 18 and a half hours left of travel to go. So, and, and Patrick, I love traveling and Kristen does as well. It's like, it's one of the things that we sort of fell in love doing. One of our first big experiences together was a trip around the world. Mm. Um, so we're so happy to get back to travel now, but travel with tiny kids is, <laughs> it's like, you know, tougher than running a university in some ways. We, uh, in our research, yeah. I, I, we found out that you've been to all 50 states. Oh America. yeah, 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 yeah. Last so. one was Alaska. That was a road trip. I bought oh. a big Suburban um, with my, my best friend Dave and then <laughs> my best friend Al. My best friend Dave and my other best friend Steve. I got two, two guys. Uh, and we drove to Alaska in a Suburban with a bumper sticker on it that says, Dave bought this car during his goth phase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, awesome. it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah, long trip. One of our employees in dining, his name is Lee, he okay. actually makes these sauces, so... Um, oh, I know Lee. Yeah, yeah. We're excited to uh, include a sauce from one of our people in-house here. Okay, I love that. Oh, yeah. So you're going... Oh, oh my I'm gosh, going for Patrick. it. Patrick, you're really showing me up here, but I'm going <laughs> gonna, gonna to go with you, I guess. Yeah, right. cheers, yeah. Lee. This one has, like, visible seeds. And there's a, I can really, I get the capsaicin. A little bit of warmth developing in my temple there, yeah. Just like a little bit, yeah. You know, I'm getting a little bit of sweat. Well, yeah, a little bit, you know. With our extensive makeup crew here, though, it should be no problem. We'll be back in, you know, prime shape for the camera. We'll stop for hair and makeup. They yeah. can, they'll clean us up a bit. When we come back, it'll be an hour later. No one knows that. Um, so, you know, we were just talking about your travels. Um, are you familiar with the Trans-Siberian Railway? Yes. So, so my wife and I, uh, so Kristen and I, it's like more than 15 years ago, we did that, which I'm sure, you know, and we did it backwards. So you can do it west to east. Um, so from St. Pete, uh, St. Petersburg or Moscow over to Vladivostok. And I used to speak Russian. I still like carry some things with me, but at that point in time, it was a long time ago. And so, uh, and so like Russian was all good um, during that trip, really helpful. Uh, but we didn't have enough Russian money. So eventually we got to a place where in order to buy the veggies and all the stuff on the train platform, um, we're gonna have to get money. So I got off the train and we needed money. And there was a, there, we knew there was a little ATM. This is back in you know, 2007-ish, so you know, so there was an ATM. 
went into the train station, ATM, a bunch of people were in line because they needed money too. So they were, they were, you know, doing their transactions. Kristen was with me. And then she walked back to the train and she came back. She's like, hey, they're kind of loading up. We should probably go back. And I said, you know what? We got to get this money now. So I was like, I'm going to wait. You go back uh, and get on the train. So I guess she did. And the line was just agonizingly slow. And I could tell things were starting to empty out but I was just laser focused on this. I get up there and I, I do that ATM transaction in Siberia, but luckily it goes so quickly, so smooth. Grab the money, walk out of the train station. Thankfully the transaction was fast because I walk out and the train is moving already. No one is around and all I hear is Kristen somewhere screaming, Brock, run! <laughs> and so <laughs> the long distance trains were on the outer track so I had no time to like go to the actual walkway. I had to jump down onto the rails, into the well, jump over the rails, climb out of the next one. And then, you know, finally I got to our track. I ran and jumped on the, the train, the moving train, maybe two cars from the end before it was gonna be gone. And I won't exaggerate, I mean, it wasn't going 50 miles an hour, but it was not going five miles an hour either. It hurt when I jumped on it because it was moving so quickly. And I banged on it. Uh, finally, this guy uh, that we knew from the dining car let me in. And I walked in triumphant. Like I had just saved the world, like some action hero. And I thought Kristen was going to come up and give me a big hug and a big kiss. You know, oh, honey, like can't believe you made it. But, you know, it was my first glimpse into how amazing she is and fire she, fiery she is. Because she walked up and she just shook her head. And she, it was inappropriate, but she gave me like a giant smack right on the chest. And like, you fool. Like, I, because I had all our passports and all our money and everything. So she would have been on the train to Moscow with nothing. So I made it. Tons of other good memories from that trip. But uh, yeah, that was a harrowing adventure. I was glad my running background came into play at that point in time. I was able to get across those tracks fast. Yeah, so, you know, international affairs and just, like, Indiana Jones activities. Yeah, that's, I'm sure it looked ridiculous, but actually in my mind's eye, that is kind of how I see it. Yeah, well, we'll sure. get you a hat, we'll get you a whip. I like it, yeah, yeah, I like it. Awesome. Houseman's hazardous sauce. Now, apparently it's nasty licious. Ah, I describe lots of things that way, you know. Yeah, you <laughs> this know. This budget's going to be nasty licious, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> So Rowan University, okay, Rowan University too. It seems like there's something there. Okay, I'm. This is totally uncharted territory, and like the brown stuff always kind of scares me a little bit, you know. Cause Brown's a scary color when it comes to sauces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, cheers. Let's do it. That's really tasty. It is. It's not too bad. Growing up in Plymouth, you are a um, self-described lifelong Lions fan. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. And, you know, at that time, you probably got to witness some of the best years for Detroit sports. Yeah, the many best. Oh, well, Detroit sports generally, yeah, for sure. Um, we were wondering if you can give us, like, a top three favorite all-time Detroit sports athletes. Oh, athletes? Yeah, actually, that's probably not too hard. Um, so, growing up, growing up, Alan Trammell. Um, shortstop for the Tigers. And in fact, during my kind of baseball card era, I tried to collect every Alan Trammell card that was out there. I didn't, I didn't get there. I was in that maniacal. So Alan Trammell, um, I would say uh, from the Pistons, you got to go Big Ben Wallace. Um, those were like the glory years. Although I had great, the 1989, this is all beyond you, Patrick, but uh, 1989, 1990, the original Bad Boys, that was a big deal. Ben Wallace from the Pistons. From the Lions. I mean, I really am a diehard, uh, diehard Lions fan, so it's tough to pick. I was a huge Barry Sanders fan, so like everyone was. Keep away from eyes, pets, and children. Is that students as well? Or is it not? <laughs> uh, not for people with heart or respiratory problems. Shake well and refrigerate after. That's like a legit, serious warning. And it's not bolded or colorful or anything. I think there's actually a section above that. It tells you... Yeah. Yeah, and, and so why would someone use this? It's a great cooking ingredient for sauces, soups, and stews, but also multi-purpose. We all wear many hats these days. It says it also strips waxed floors and removes driveway grease stains. Enjoy. I'm nervous about this one. Oh, this right. is like a gigantic. Oh, we got okay. a big curve. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going big dip. Patrick, are you serious, man? No, oh, this is actually, this is dangerous. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, I'll double. This is really, Patrick. It's been nice knowing you. Yeah, you I hope well. you enjoy getting to know the 18th president of Northern <laughs> University. All right. All right. This is a really bad idea. Like legit. <coughs> is 
zen right now? Whoa. <coughs> you feeling good? You know, I was gonna drink milk. We're, you know, we're getting towards the back end here. I think I'm just gonna go, no milk. Wow, that's catching up with me. All right. My forearms are pretty sweaty right now. My, my everything is pretty sweaty right now. So. How sweet it is, Patrick. I'm so glad you asked me here. You know, I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> so, um. Wow. Huh. We heard you really like playing Settlers of Catan, and <laughs> <laughs> we heard you like Settlers of Catan. I can't answer you. I can't answer you. And we heard you have an affinity for board games. What's your dynamic duo? What are your favorite two board games? Mm. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Can I pretend like I'm thinking carefully about this? <clears throat> I'm a kid of the Cold War. Yeah, you're crying because my answer is going to be so... Um, Kid of the Cold War. There's a game called Twilight <laughs> Struggle, which allows you to replay the Cold War between the Soviet Union and, and the United States. It, it was number one on Board Game Geek for a really long time. Oh, wow. That's a good one. And then, you know, Settlers is kind of a cheap... I, I mean, Settlers is an amazing game, because it's one of those games where you always feel like you have a chance to win, unless every once in a while you just have a bum game. So I love it for that. Um, but the classic Axis and Allies. That was like my first cool military strategy game, so. We're into our ninth sauce, we're almost there. We're getting towards the top of Heat Mountain. So, here we have the Detroit Ghost Pepper Hot Sauce. There we go. Ooh, yeah, okay. There's some heat there. I'm gonna be honest, I'm still recovering from that last It feels one. like a a comforting salve compared to Dave's insanity sauce. I'd say so. It's tasty. Yeah. Like we're saying, Dave's like my white whale. Really? You know, like I don't know what it is. That really gets me the wrong way. Oh, me this too. This one is just like it must be fifty percent milk. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up with uh, a large interest in sports, claiming that you would someday like to be a professional baseball player for the Detroit Tigers, and um, eventually you shifted your interest yeah. from sports into political science and academia and policy and things like that. Um, was there anything specifically that, that sort of guided you on that journey to answer the, the age old question, you know, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Yeah. And um, what advice would you give to um, students or younger people that are struggling with that notion? I was a bad student my first year in high school. And by bad, I don't mean, you know, gosh, I picked up some B pluses along the way. <laughs> some C minuses, a bunch of Fs. I had to retake uh, world history, and because of that, I got kind of switched around in terms of the, the track I was on. So I ended up with the hard history teacher my sophomore year, Mr. McClellan. Mr. McClellan was super tough on students. No one liked him, but I loved it. Big into maps, big into flags, like big into like kind of uh, the kinds of things I just really kind of geeked out on. I was like, oh, learning is super fun. Anyhow, I did well in that class and it kind of turned the corner for me academically and I did pretty well from that point on. And, and to this date, one of the biggest compliments I ever got was, was him signing my high school yearbook and he said, Brock, it was real short, you have what it takes to be a history teacher. And so that got me thinking like, wow, Mr. McClellan, who I looked up to so much, thinks I can be a teacher and it's, and it's such a big deal. The other one is Steve Chan. Uh, who I hope is gonna be here in the fall for this kind of investiture thing, but he was my advisor in grad school and he knew I was big into running, you know, and, and I was. I, I didn't even look at any other programs because I wanted to go out to Colorado and run for the University of Colorado. And so I just had to find a grad program to sign up for. I'm okay saying that now. But anyhow, after a year, I dropped out to concentrate. It was the year 2000 on the Olympic trials. And uh, <clears throat> when that didn't work out, I came back and I said, you know, like, I wanna come back in the program. And he said, you can come back. I'll take you on as a PhD student, but you gotta pursue this with as much kind of fervor as you pursued your running. And so that kind of instilled in me like that hard work's not just about sports, which is kind of what I'd known up until that point. You can pour it into different parts of your life. And I did it and I loved it, man. I mean, I, I feel so lucky to have made the choices I made. So to people, I would say, hang in there. It comes at different points. And, you know, even if you're not hitting your stride yet, like I was not at all as a high school student, you never know it's going to kind of turn things for you. And it doesn't have to mean that things are going that much better in the classroom. You just find your passion and then find your way.
I mean, I guess we're gonna make it now. It's just whether we like fall back. You know, this is the last. We should actually. Let's cheers. cheers. This one. You got it, man. Thank All you. All right. Yeah. Whew. That one's a little more front loaded, I think. Here we are. We're at the top of Spice Mountain. We are. Um, you know, now we're gonna kind of roll out the red carpet for you. If you have anything you want to say to the people or Northern or something you want to plug, we have this camera, this camera, this camera. Look into a camera, tell the people what you're doing. Yeah, what I'm doing. Uh, well, I feel good to be on the top of Spice Mountain. I want to say, um, this is one of those moments where you like, can't believe that this is part of your job. It is a little bit of a time out from the normal day, but um, for me, you know, being part of this campus and having a chance just to sit down like with you, Patrick, and with the crew here, it is, is so much a privilege. So we'll have the hard work to do. Things aren't always gonna go well. And I hope people who are watching, you know, if they're plugged in, they're gonna be mad sometimes and frustrated. But we keep the communication open and just know it's coming from the heart. This place is such a special place. Um, our family is so happy here. And uh, this place is not exactly family, but Northern feels like that. It's such a tight knit community. Awesome. Well. We really appreciate you. We appreciate you know you taking the time to come out here and do this for us, and um, it looks like you handled it pretty well. So <laughs> we made um, it. <laughs> yeah, we made it, Patrick. Thanks. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's for us. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's all for us here at the Third Degree. So where are we at in the season right now, McKaylee? Um, we're kind of just going through conference for the second time. So playing every team again okay. for the second time. We've got Parkside on Thursday, which would be a good matchup. But we're, we're sitting in a really good spot conference-wise. It's no, exciting. No, I know. <laughs> and things are picking up speed. So second time around, does it make it more intellectual the second time around? Because you're kind of studying, like, you know, game tape and sort of learning from your, your first matchup? Yeah, I, I would say so. It's yeah. a lot of, okay, what did we do well the first time? What did we not do well? And then learning from that, obviously teams change over the course yep. of a couple of weeks even. So. And It'll then you be, get in the playoffs, and then maybe it's a third time. And then it's these yeah, teams. and then it's yeah. you're matching up against a team for the third time, and you're like, well, this could go this could go any way in playoffs. So. Well, I'm excited. I mean, I, I we're in the Barry, uh, which mm -hmm. I mean is a, a fantastic place to watch all sorts of uh, all sorts of games. When it fills up for basketball, it's definitely fantastic. Yeah. When there's not as many people here, sometimes early in the season, it's a big arena. But playoff time, I think it's going to be exciting. So we have a shot to host. Maybe a series. I would say so. Okay. Yeah, fingers right. crossed. If okay. we if we keep doing well like we have been, but yeah. Okay. It's, it's I know it's too early to tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of time and energy uh, uh, on the court, but I also know you're super involved off the court, uh, interested in sustainability mm -hmm. and athletics. So how do those things fit together? They don't come to mind often as like a pair, but tell me about that. Yeah. And you're doing research on that right now yeah. as a grad student, right? Yeah. yeah, so that's what my master's is kind of focusing okay. on right now. Um, sustainability is something that I've always been really mm. interested in since a young age, and obviously basketball too. Yeah. So kind of in my last year here, I'm like, okay, how can I put these two sure. together? And it definitely does cross over. Like there's a lot of things that we as student athletes can do to sure. help make our campus, our community more sustainable and more, yeah. more green, which is, it's exciting. It's, it's fun yeah. to work with different people around campus and try and make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, one thing I think about a little bit, cause I travel a lot in my mm -hmm. job. Um, and I know athletics, I mean, our teams travel all around as well. And so, there are some times where I'm kind of sensitive to that. I think, well, you know, I know we're, we're, we're putting a lot out in the atmosphere and so there's a big footprint, but I also know there's a lot of good that comes from the competition and sort of everything that, that comes along with athletics or for me, if I go to a conference or a meeting. So yeah. it's just, it's more complicated than it seems on the surface. So I'm not surprised a graduate student kind of master's project 
yeah. can dive into that. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. research that goes into yeah. a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily think about, but it's fun to kind of get into the nitty gritty with yeah. it and, and see everything. I'll let maybe you can share your thesis when it's done oh, for some sure. of your projects. Yeah. Do other players on the team give you a hard time about being a grad student and kind of, you know, pretty serious student or no? They just think I'm old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just call me a, they a grandma the sometimes. It just gets worse. Okay, it just <laughs> and gets I'm worse. like, come on guys, give me a break. But <laughs> yeah. What's been, uh, so, so it's not a lightning round. Okay. Cause I would not do that to you on yeah. camera, but, um, what's been kind of the biggest surprise for you? I know you probably heard about Northern for the first time. I mean, I'm, I assume you were a recruited athlete. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you knew a little bit coming in, but I'm sure there've been some surprises since you've been here. So like a really great yeah. surprise. And then one thing we're like, Whoa, I didn't understand that. And maybe it's something you've had to work through as an adjustment. Yeah. Um, Honestly, to be com like completely honest, I hadn't really heard that much about the UP in general yeah. before I got yeah, here. So yeah. I think just coming here, being completely immersed into the, the UPER culture was something oh that gosh. was a little bit to get used to. Not that Wisconsin is much different in yeah. a lot of ways, but that was definitely a surprise for me. Some things that they do up here, I'm like, It's pretty Whoa. amazing. It's but pretty it's, amazing. Yeah. You see these dark fun. circles in my eyes? Like part of it is just because <laughs> I'm old uh, and stressed. <laughs> yeah. The other part of it is it last night. I think um, we probably spent like an hour catching up with Fritz, you know, old time oh, hockey yeah. and uh, just like diving deep into, which I understand is called camp core. Um, it's like a, you know, like really specific kind of UP culture dive. Mm -hmm. You can never stop learning about that. No. It's been a fun part for me and our family being here for like a year. Yeah. yeah and just, uh, I know we could be here for 50 years and still be and learning. Still, yeah. There's still something that surprises you. <laughs> yeah. So after you graduate, mm -hmm. a little coaching, more grad school, yeah. What are you thinking? Um, so my master's will take me two years, most likely. Okay, yeah. um, this is my first year doing it. So I figured I'm a, I'm a year into it. I might yeah. as well finish it out strong. Um, yes. I think you strike me as the kind of person who will finish it out. Yeah. Strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I've been here for yeah. <laughs> six years, but yeah. <laughs> going on. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to hopefully stay involved with the team being Good. here next year. I don't think I could really do without if I was up yeah. here. I think that'd be hard to do. So I want to try try the coaching world, see if it's yeah. something that fits me that I, that I enjoy doing and then kind of see from there. Um, okay. definitely want to keep going on the sustainability side, mm -hmm. maybe try and integrate that however possible, but lots of opportunities for sure. Can I give you a compliment? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and the compliment's not about all GLIAC and, you know, all time leading score and all, although that's amazing too. <laughs> Thank um, you. But, uh, so, so I was an athlete in college. Um, but my identity like got so wrapped up in just that one thing. Like mm -hmm. I was just, I was a runner. runner like, uh, yeah. and I don't know you well, but I, I love the fact that you have certainly this identity as, a, as one of the best basketball players ever in, at Northern, but also you have this whole other part of your world, you know, with your grad studies and something that you really care deeply about with sustainability. And so that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's tempting and maybe for a lot of people watching, you just dive into one thing and that becomes all of you. And then yeah. if it goes away, or doesn't go the way you like it can be really difficult to transition that was hard for me yeah and i'm sure it'll be hard for you you know as your playing for days sure. wrap up but i think you have all these other interests and that's just um really amazing and impressive you're not Thank a grandma you. you're young Thank and so you. for someone at your stage to have to have all that in place is really good yeah i think it's i think it's key for being able to keep succeeding yeah. at a sport to have other things that keep you occupied keep you happy when things might not be going too well sometimes so i would agree i yeah. would agree so I did mention, uh, of course, you know, for folks who don't know, all of the accolades you have in terms of career scoring, um, conference recognition, certainly accolades off the court as well. Um, I like to think of myself as kind of a strategic person and I set myself up mm -hmm. for success. But I hear we're going to play a little game of pig or horse, <laughs> oh boy. which seems for a president to kind of play that type of game with one of the best basketball players ever to set foot at Northern it's is a bold move. an unwise move. So. Hopefully there'll be lots of good editing and cuts afterwards to make me look somewhat proficient on the court. But, um, McKaylee, thanks for spending a little bit of time uh, with me this morning. Congratulations on an awesome career. Thank you. On your graduate studies and can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much. You got it's it. It's been great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Can we play like anti-disestablishmentarianism so I can like warm up a little bit? Yeah. And then you can't also. And then I can't, can't warm up. You can't mess with me on like. Uh, I won't do any trick shots. Or, or like getting me on a, like a layup or something like that, which is going to be much more difficult. <laughs> I All right. Give me like 10 more shots and then we'll see.
what we can do. I have to take my grad studies uh, fleece off too. Yeah. Ooh, that's in. There we go. Oh, oh that's going to be sore tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. You're calling me old? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, lucky bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get like, yeah, a little leeway. Oh. G? G for go cats? Okay. <laughs> so now you have to be part geometry or physics student. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's a tough one. All right. The bank is hard. Okay, I gotta go. I've gotta go. Yeah, see, this we need more footage than this. You're gonna have to be take a little bit more time. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. oh okay. That's close. We're getting there. Yeah, I won't pull any threes because oh, yeah. I don't know if I can make any threes right now either. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's like my best. This takes like a little bit of touch and repetition, you know, the three, just blind luck. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. On a roll now. <laughs> yeah. There we go. This is a fun game to play with you, McKaylee. <laughs> this is a really fun game to play with you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, that's no good. So you'll get a new floor with a new court, yeah? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that's the plan, at least. That'll be cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, short. Uh, I'll take invoke my presidential take privilege. There, there we go. go. Okay. <laughs> doesn't count, doesn't count, doesn't count. Okay. So I've got a go, go, Goka. Goka. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go top of the key. There you go. Be good. Straight on. Oh, that's cash. All right. Woo! Wow, look at that. You might get me on Every this once one. in a while, you take enough shots, and like every once in a while, it goes in. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We got a letter. There's a we D. got a letter. We got a letter. <laughs> we got a, we got a letter. We got a letter. All right. That's the letter. I'm a one letter, one letter guy. Oh, boy. Ah. <sighs> That looks good. This is like your money zone, isn't yeah, it? This yeah, this is, is like a little. Maybe come off a screen or pull up. Yeah, and you just got it. You little mid-range jumper. Face the basket, Brock. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Almost had the bank. I think I'm at go cat now. Go cat. But we Singular? do get an exclamation. Are we doing point. like an excla yeah, yeah, exclamation? Yeah, exclamation exactly. point at the end. <laughs> Actually, we should have had the the apostrophe that go. You know, apostrophe cats. And then go, go cats, go. Go cats, right? go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh. All right, all right. This one I actually feel a little bit be better about. Oh yeah. All right. There we go. See, the problem is if you don't make these shots, we'll be here until like we'll just, you know until noon. Just a nice little like, yeah. Yeah. little shooting round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Oh. Ooh. All right, we're close. We got Go one more. We got an exclam exclamation point. Now you can you can do your worst. You can do something oh crazy. You got to do like a trick shot or trick something shot? like that. Yeah. Maybe I'll try this one just for fun. I don't know if I can do this. Oh man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Easy enough. I think that's easy enough. Aren't well, you it's all about like, the physics. Yeah. It's all about the physics. <laughs>
Located on the shores of Lake Superior, surrounded by the natural beauty of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, is an educational experience unlike any other. Northern Michigan University has been fueling students' quest for knowledge and adventure since 1899. This university is much more than beautiful scenery and exhilarating experiences. With over 180 degree programs spanning from one-year certificates to a doctorate, our 7,200 students find a perfect fit for their passions. And with degrees from 46 of the 50 fastest growing jobs, graduates go on to their dream careers. Our beautiful campus features 50 facilities, including state-of-the-art laboratories and the largest wooden dome in the world, the Superior Dome, home to Wildcat football and community events. Our Central Academic Mall features Jamrich Hall, with 24 classrooms designed for collaborative learning. Here, students meet the future in programs like data science in the math and computer science department. They work with investigators to solve actual cold cases in criminal justice. They pursue equity and empathy in social work and discover the many forms of diversity and humanity in sociology and anthropology. They may even work on the first draft of the next great American novel with their English professor. Jamrich also has a 500-seat lecture hall that doubles as a venue for visits from famous performers. Students enjoy sunny study spaces and a Starbucks. The academic mall is lined by Hardin Hall in the Olson Library, with resources for research. The Science Building in Weston Hall feature cutting-edge laboratories and technologies for programs like chemistry, biology, and psychology. In health fields like nursing and clinical sciences, students get hands-on experience and even conduct real-life research on cancer cells in the Upper Michigan Brain Tumor Center. The arts at NMU are amazing and expanding. The School of Art and Design in the DeVos Art Museum building offers 10 creative concentrations, from digital cinema to furniture design, and an interdisciplinary degree with the College of Business and Social Media Design Management. Students produce and star in Broadway quality shows in NMU's theater and dance program and at the Forrest Roberts Theater. Our seven theater arts degrees prepare students for careers on the stage and in crucial roles behind the scenes in the entertainment industry. Northern Michigan University is located on the ancestral homelands of the Anishinaabe Three Fires Confederacy. The NMU Center for Native American Studies in Whitman Hall celebrates the heritage of this land and those who first called it home and explores contemporary and historic issues facing indigenous peoples. Whitman Hall also houses the School of Education, where future teachers, leaders, and public servants learn the skills to uplift communities throughout the world. Nearby is the spacious Northern Center, which houses brand new spaces for the cosmetology and hospitality management programs, as well as the Upper Peninsula Cybersecurity Institute. A little north of Central Campus is our Career Technology and Engineering Facility, undergoing extensive expansion and renovation, set to reopen this fall. Ten trades programs, from renewable energies to welding, lead to careers in high-demand, high-paying fields. In the Indoor Agriculture program, students learn to grow food and plants in any environment, such as inside a shipping container, to meet the challenges of climate change and world food shortages. Wildcat well-being is an important ongoing initiative at Northern Michigan University. A new integrated health and wellness center on campus is being constructed to provide a central yet confidential location for medical and mental health services for all students. That too will open this fall. Students also find a strong support system in our dorms, which are some of the best in the state. The Woods features three residence halls with a classroom, student success center, and designated study spaces. The Quad has four residence halls and the Fit Zone Gym. Each dorm is connected to Northern Lights Dining, and all students can enjoy the relaxing and comfortable common space in the lodge. Athletics are a huge part of life at NMU. With 18 NCAA teams, NMU club sports have gone on to national championships, and intramural athletics are a great way for students to continue playing the sports they grew up with. Wildcats are highly encouraged to join some of our 300 student clubs. They are a great way to find friends, have fun, get involved, and make an impact on our community here at Marquette. Positive impacts are what alumni from Northern Michigan University continue to create around the world. Our graduates have gone on to work for companies like Google, Netflix, NASA, and many professional sports organizations. Wildcats have competed in the Olympics, started companies that have risen to global prominence, made scientific discoveries that have changed the world, and so much more. 
We've got the campus, the classes, and the community. So where will your NMU adventure take you?
That's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance
class is extremely exciting. Um, the class of 2024 is going to be a great foundation for what we're doing in the future. And I think to go back, we tried to explain to them, we tried to paint a vision for them. And that's what it is. I mean, we're not recruiting to a bunch of wins, you know, obviously with our season last year. Uh, we're trying to recruit to a vision, to something where they're going to be part of a legacy and building that from the ground up here. And um, you know, all of them see that. And I think that's what's really special about these guys is they're committing uh, to something where they want to help build it. They want to help be a part of it. They want to help, uh, you know, just take advantage of a great opportunity that's in front of them. And, um, you know, I just can't give them enough credit to where, you know, I'm so excited about the commitment that they've made just because uh, it's not easy to go through a winless season and then be able to put together a class. And, you know, I just, our coaches have worked their tails off. Um, these guys have trusted what we're doing and they see what we're doing and what we want to do and where we want to go with the program. And I just can't say enough about them. You know, obviously you want all of the physical tools and the things that are going to go into on the field play. Uh, but I think just more importantly, we're going to get guys in the 2024 class that understand where we are and where we want to go and get to and they're willing to want to be a part of that in a major way. We start this process back in April and we get on the road, we start to go out to all the schools in the spring and you know while they're still juniors we're getting information, talking to coaches and then starting that process, starting that relationship and uh, we have a junior day on campus. We had a lot of good participation with that. A lot of kids came Got to see just a little snippet of NMU and Marquette and um, you know what that does is it sparks an interest and then we have uh, camps in the summer that we hold and we traveled around to different satellite locations where we had those this summer. We had two that were on campus. We actually visited a lot of other camps ourselves to be able to see other guys and throughout that time you know June and July you just acquire the names you just get in-person evaluations and you really build your database and kind of you know who you want to target in on um, and then you go into the fall you track them throughout their seasons you get them to, to games uh, we had guys that were still coming up here um, a lot of numbers you know even halfway and even late into the season when things weren't going very well for our team uh, and guys were still interested and excited and so you know I think something to be said is we can get kids to NMU, we can get kids to Marquette, and so we just got to make sure we're continually uh, finding the right ones, which I think this class uh, does offer that, and I'm really excited about them. And um, I just think the process, you know, it, it comes down to guys being very intentional about trusting that process with us, us being able to be very thorough with that and very honest with them about everything. And um, I just think it, it bodes for a great relationship, and there's like, going to be a lot of trust and commitment that is forged here going into the future and so you know once we get to the fall late fall we start to have uh, official visits in january we finish them up in i'm sorry
Northern Michigan University's renovated Jacob Betty Complex opens up this fall semester. This cutting-edge career and engineering tech center houses training programs for many of the state's most in-demand careers. Programs like construction management, industrial maintenance, HVAC, and engineering tech are all found here. It's also home to continuing ed and workforce development, like commercial truck driving. Take your career to the next level in these fresh facilities stocked with the latest equipment. Learn more at nmu.edu.
Come live on and live up. Northern Michigan University has a rich history in sports, but there was a time where women weren't able to contribute to that winning culture. Even before Title IX was passed into law, it was for the efforts of people like Barb Patrick, who were the sole advocates of bringing women into the world of collegiate sports. At her request, NMU added field hockey to their collection of sports in 1968, therefore establishing the school's first women's varsity team in a time where the thought of that was easily dismissed. Title IX would be signed into law four years later, but the effects were not seen immediately. Reflecting back now after 50 years, it's evident that we don't have a perfect system, but the only thing coaches and athletes at this university and others around the country have to worry about is competing. Title IX to me means opportunity, and for me, my career. The fact that swimming was just always there for me, and I've been able to make a career out of the sport that I love is complete opportunity and I can't imagine not being able to play soccer and I know a lot of the people in the generations that came before me didn't get to like my relatives and were acting like women didn't play sports uh, 50 years ago it's just craziness for so long I think women have been trying to get us opportunity to play the sport I love with the people I love at a place I love and you know get an education on top of that to me title IX means the equal opportunity to come here and reach my fullest potential as a collegiate athlete you know, you learn so much from sports, uh, being on a team, leadership, self-confidence, how to work together, and how to... Located on the shores of...
any of you guys have anything to say to friends, family, and haters, this is your last chance. Yeah. Anything is possible! <laughs> yeah. We went back to back. My team be acting like they all shy and junk. Now they don't want to be in front of the camera. Everybody goofy. Man, I want to show their personality. <laughs> We I back to feel, back. I just feel win. We back to back. We done did it again. CP3 ain't got nothing on me. CP3 ain't got nothing on me. He ain't CP3 no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we done went back to back. I'm about to go home, man. I ain't got a long time. See y'all next year, man.